Ensuring worker safety is critical in any workplace environment, and effective fall protection strategies are vital in achieving this goal. One of these strategies is known as the hierarchy of fall protection. This multi-tiered approach is used to maximize safety in environments where falls are risk. The hierarchy is structured to prioritize methods that completely eliminate risk over those that minimize them. This systematic approach is fundamental to workplace safety, providing a step-by-step -step guide for assessing and managing fall hazards. Adhering to this hierarchy will ensure compliance with safety regulations, reduce liability risks, and promote a more aware and educated workforce. Let's break down each of the five levels of the hierarchy, starting with the most effective methods first. Hazard elimination. The most effective way to remove risk is to remove the hazard. This involves redesigning the work site or changing work practices to remove the fall hazard entirely. It's the most direct and effective method of fall protection. By eliminating the hazard, the need for further protective measures becomes redundant. This level is the most desirable outcome in the hierarchy of fall protection. Passive fall protection. Sometimes hazard elimination isn't realistic given the situation. So the next best outcome on the hierarchy is passive fall protection or fall protection that doesn't require the user to take any special action or receive any training. Guardrails, skylight screens, and other barriers are examples of passive fall protection. They create a physical barrier between the worker and the fall hazard. These systems provide direct protection without the direct involvement of a worker. All these reasons contribute to why passive fall protection sits at number two on the hierarchy. Active travel restraint. When passive systems don't provide the means to access necessary portions of the roof or job site, active travel restraint systems are the next best option. These include systems like body harnesses connected to anchor points that prevent the worker from reaching a point where a fall could happen. Active travel restraint requires some level of worker training and participation and are more involved than passive systems, but they protect the worker by preventing them from even reaching a fall hazard. Active fall arrest. Fourth in the hierarchy are active fall arrest systems. When the job site or work being performed doesn't allow for the use of a passive or travel restraint system, active fall arrest is the next option. This is more unfavorable than travel restraint because while travel restraint prevents a fall from happening, fall arrest is meant to stop a fall that has already taken place. While the user will be protected from the full fall, it still is dangerous and proper rescue plans need to be in place to promptly remove the fallen user as soon as possible. For these reasons, it's one of the last resorts on the hierarchy. Administrative controls. The least effective option on the hierarchy is administrative controls. These are workplace policies and training procedures that reduce the likelihood of falls. Examples include regular safety training, warning signs, and work schedules that minimize exposure to fall hazards. While these are important, they rely heavily on workers complying with rules. Administrative controls work best when they're paired alongside other fall protection methods and are typically the last resort when putting a safety plan together. By understanding and effectively implementing each level of the fall protection hierarchy, organizations can create customized safety plans to minimize fall risks. If you have any questions regarding the best solution for your application, reach out to the experts at Diversified Fall Protection who will be happy to help out. Learn more at fallprotect.com.